Ashia baza le kaya isa se na yosebenza so sebenza nanti shiwe le le shiwe le le shiwe le le shiwe le le so sebenza nanti shiwe le le Yeah. 
Right, I have the Deputy Secretary and Acting Secretary General, Commissioner Kanya Bungan. And on my left, I have the Treasurer General of the EFF Students Command, um, Amanda Ndombela. And on my left, immediate left, I have the President of the EFF Students Command, Sichelons. Over to you, President. No, thank you very much uh, to members of the media who are here. Uh, and also greetings to the viewers, students at home who are watching from our live platforms. The Economic Freedom Fighter Student Command takes this opportunity to thank all students in both universities and technical and vocational education and training colleges who have shown their uncompromising trust and loyalty to the students' command of the EFF. These past SRC elections have been an undisputable testament that indeed the future intelligentsia of South Africa is buying into the message of the EFF and the struggle for economic freedom in our lifetime. Of the 21 universities which went to SRC elections, the EFFSC has claimed control of 16, sharing two, and of course will outline the ones which we have lost. Already, without even completing the SRC election season, the EFFSC has already surpassed the total number of institutions it has won in the past in a given academic calendar. We are not done, yet we have already broken our own record. This is because we are not in a competition with any student or youth-aligned organization of the ANC. We are competing with ourselves. When we wake up in the morning, we ask, how can we improve from yesterday? Not who is our competition, because we have no competition. The FFSC has won. The University of South Africa, the University of the Western Cape, the University of Cape Town, Seoul Plage University, University of the Free State, Central University of Technology, Bluefontein Campus, University of Witwatersrand, University of Pretoria, Tswane University of Technology, Val University of Technology, Mangosut University of Technology, Deben University of Technology, University of Venda, University of Limpopo, University of Forte, as well as Nelson Mandela University. We have lost uh, CPUT in Cape Town, UKZN, CUT Velcom Campus, and were tied at the University of Johannesburg, where we won two campuses out of four, and Sasko won two campuses out of four, and we share the central seats. The Northwest University, we won the Mafikeng campus and lost the Purchase Room campus. In the TVET sector, although the majority of the institutions go to elections in the first quarter of the year, we must highlight our decisive victories in the Capricorn TVET College, Waterbeck TVET College, Umtashane, as well as Umfolozi. The organization is readying itself for the first run of TVET College SRC elections, majority of which take place at the beginning of the academic year next year. We now have the task to convert all these SRC victories to the electoral growth and ultimate victory of the economic freedom fighters in the 2024 provincial and national government elections. In all our interactions with students throughout these elections, we've made it a point to emphasize that these SRC elections are not just about SRC elections in and of themselves. Rather, these SRC elections are a means to an end because we want to remove all all elements of the ANC in our institutions so that we can send a warning shot to the former liberation movement, the, the African National Congress, that we do not want them in our campuses and we're going to remove them as well in the union buildings next year and deliver a government of the EFF. We have made the clear and call that 2024 is our 1994, that if our elders fought for a political concession in South Africa, our generation must fight for economic freedom. It is only us, the youth, because we constitute more than 54% of the eligible voters who are not registered to vote. Over 5.9 million young people in South Africa will be eligible to vote next year, but as things stand, they are not registered to vote. Therefore, all these SRC elections must translate into the electoral growth and victory of the EFF. After this press conference, every SRC of the EFFSC will be receiving a letter from the Acting Secretary General of the EFFSC instructing them that from now until the voter registration week on the 18th and 19th, 
all of them must push voter registration programs on campus, and we will be taking reports on a weekly basis. The weekend of the 18th and 19th will be the first voter registration week. The EFF has established a youth and student elections mobilization committee and already it has systems in place to ensure that we don't only attract the votes at the campus level, but we must also be found in the high schools, we must also be found in our communities, we must look for all youth, including those who are not in education, employment and training. On the court actions, we have successfully interrupted the SRC elections of three universities, Northwest University, University of Pretoria, as well as SMU. In other words, they currently do not have a new SRC elected and elections are either suspended or interdicted pending the finalization of court and disciplinary hearings. As I sit here, there is currently a court process for the SMU, and we have also filed an objection in the University of KwaZulu-Natal. And for legal purposes, we are not going to dwell into much detail when it comes to the University of KZN. The EFFSC is also angered yet not surprised by the developments and revelations of the report into the corrupt dealings taking place at the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. This past week, South Africa learned that the appointments of the service providers to distribute student allowances were not only irregular, they also violated the public procurement processes of NSFAS. Yet again, the EFFSC is vindicated in its fight against the appointment of dodgy service providers who were not only incompetent, but they greedily charged students exorbitant transaction fees. We salute the decisiveness of EFFSC-led SRCs who smelled the rat early and picked up this corrupt, corruption scheme before the rest of the country could wake up. Early this year, the EFFSC engaged in a number of demonstrations to the union building as well as the Department of Higher Education in Pretoria. We even wrote directly to the Minister of Higher Education, Mr. Blade Mzimande, to whistleblow and problematize these schemes among the many other issues of higher education. Our efforts fell on deaf ears. We also wrote to the Parliament Portfolio Committee of Higher Education, which is chaired by a former Fees Must Fall activist, Ms. Nompendu Lumkatra, because we held the view that maybe she will feel and understand the pain of the students that she once led. To our surprise, she too sold her soul and protected the establishment against poor students. Today, we are vindicated we told you, South Africa, that these people are stealing. The EFFSC-led SRCs told you that these people are stealing from poor students. Yet today, everyone is shocked. The scandal is now out. We have a 47 billion rand pro problem. What type of an evil government steals from poor students who already have nothing? We have students who cannot graduate because they owe fees. We have students at the beginning of each year who cannot register because they owe fees. Their certificates are being withheld even when they've completed their qualification. Why? Because they owe fees. But these people can steal and play around with 47 billion rands. We told you, South Africa. We want to make it categorically clear that we reject the proposed solutions of NSFAS, which were writing to the CEO to explain himself, disciplinary action against staff members involved, advising all four service providers that their contracts will be terminated in the future, and reviewing of their policies to align them with the National Treasury and PMF. Why must the board ask people to explain themselves? Why are we still stalling with investigations and disciplinary hearings? Why are the dodgy contracts only being terminated in the future? This is a criminal act, and therefore criminal charges must be opened and people must be arrested. We do not have time for Stalingrad hearings. We want to see people who stole the money of students in orange overalls. Our view is that there is a systematic rot of incapacity and corruption in, in the institution of NSFAS. Not so long ago, the Special Investigating Unit found that NSFAS, together with corrupt university officials and managers, was engaged in the overpayment of funds and has no systems to reconcile between the funds that are dispersed to universities and allocated funds to students. In other words, they are paying ghost students, fictitious students being paid by NSFAS, whilst we still have the students of Walter Sisulu not having their allowances for months and the university being shut down and many other institutions in South Africa. The culprits in the corruption of NSFAS are still there. 
South Africa must not celebrate too early. One man could not have acted alone on such a big 47 billion rand scheme. We want more people to be fired, but more importantly, we want people to be arrested. This is a criminal case. It is for this reason that the EFFSC will be opening criminal charges of fraud and corruption against the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Let us see if this so-called corrupt-free administration of Cyril Ramaphosa will protect criminals who are stealing money from students or they will act against fraud and corruption in the National Student Financial Aid Scheme. The EFFSC reaffirms the position of the EFF to uncompromisingly stand with the people of Palestine. Those who are neutral in times of injustice have sided with the racist Zionist government of Israel. We cannot be neutral on the question of Israel apartheid. We have a side, and our side are the people and children who are being bombed in their hospitals, who are being bombed in their places of worship, and also being bombed in their homes by the racist Zionist state of Israel. When we condemn Israel, we are not fighting with Jewish people. There are many progressive Jews who have, in fact, distanced themselves from the human rights violations and genocide taking place in Palestine. We do not hate Jews. We hate the Zionists who are cutting the heads of children and even urinating on the bodies of the Palestinian people. We hate Benjamin Netanyahu. South Africa is where it is today because of global solidarity. Using its SRCs, the EFFSC will be calling for the academic boycott of all institutions and organizations which are aligned to or support the racist state of Israel. This is not a new thing in the world. Even during apartheid, when there were sanctions, the world did not want to play with South African teams. The world did not want to interact with South African institutions which are supporting apartheid in South Africa. So we must do the same. There is a very useless structure called the South African Union of Students. Many of the problems we are currently experiencing are as a result of these sellouts, brokering deals, and agreeing to policies on behalf of all SRCs, even without thorough consultation with the SRCs and the students. This current NEC of SAUS is not only incompetent, it is also illegitimate. Its composition and policy positions do not reflect the will of students on the ground. We therefore call for the urgent convening of the National Conference of SAUS. We will be writing to the Minister to demand the National Conference of SAUS no later than 24 December 2023. The Conference of SAUS is long overdue. It must convene now so that we can have legitimate leadership and a smooth and stable start to the new academic year. There is a new sheriff in town. The EFFSC is now in charge of majority of the institutions, and therefore the South African Union of Students must reflect the will of students. We take this opportunity to wish all those engaged in exams, the metric exams, the university exams, we wish you well. We wish you particularly those who are coming from rural and township schools because we know that the government of the ANC has neglected you. We know that the study conditions are not conducive to a metric exam. So we have you in our hearts and we wish you well as you engage in the upcoming metric exams as well as the university students who are engaged in exams. I thank you. There's only one hand. I have five questions. Okay, over to you, President. Yeah, um, what protocol observed uh, for the afternoon? Uh, the EFF student command uh, lost a university of KZN. Uh, how do you feel about uh, losing that, that university? Uh, but also, uh, how do you feel about your Second question on the suspension of the uh, SG. Uh, what's your opinion on the suspension of the SG? And then my third question, I'll come around for the second round. Oh, I think your mic is off, sorry. Oh. I should have. Uh, oh. yeah. Okay, must I start all over here? Yeah, please. Okay. 
And I'm just going to ask three questions in this round, but I hope the next round I'll be able to ask. My first question is the EFF lost a university of KZN. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, you've also made some strides in winning some universities. So if you take soccer score, will you say it's 6-1, 6-0, 12-1, or, or whatever, if you, somebody can do that calculation? The second part is in terms of the suspension of the EFF Student Command uh, Secretary General. And the third point on the NESFAS, and I hope in my second round I can zoom more on that because I have a lot of questions about that. How do you feel about the corruption that's been exposed? 47 billion is not uh, petty cash. Uh, we come from COVID where 500 billion just disappeared. Uh, we don't know where it went. Now we're sitting with 47 billion. We're sitting with service providers on uh, we're sitting with the CEO that's suspended. We're sitting with the minister that's still there. We're sitting with the HOD that's still there. So in the scheme, we're sitting with the board that's still there. There's, there's no way that one man can approve anything in government in terms of PMFA. I know you highlighted it. In, in terms of PMFA, that can approve anything more than 500,000, let alone 47 billion, most of those service providers, the lowest got 5 million, 10 million, and so on. I'll wait for second round. Thank you. Um, to add another question, there's a question from UDAPS Radio that there had been a mayhem pertaining to deployment processes to SRC of the organization, and this seems to be the center of many divisions within the organization. This has led to the expulsion of the SG, of the EFFSC. There are some universities that had issues with deployments, University of Limpopo, University of Western Cape, Mangosut University of Technology, recently University of Forte. Can you delve deeper as what were the problems in these universities and how have you addressed these challenges? Over to you, Bruce. No, thank you very much. And then I think on the the loss of the University of KwaZulu Natal, uh, I think as we reflected in our statement, we are we have filed our objection. Um, I don't want to go into the merits yet uh, because it's an ongoing process, and we have been advised that uh, until we our team has decided in terms of uh, the steps it will take, uh, we must keep uh, quiet about that. But of course. On the political front, the University of Kozu Natal is a very important university to us. You will remember we won it for the first time last year. All campuses, landslide. Uh, and an interesting thing to note is that when you see the SRC numbers of this year, uh, in, in, in many of the campuses we have in fact maintained the numbers we received last year. So it's an important university for us, an important university in the province of KZN, and we're going to allow uh, processes to unfold and from time to time we'll update the public uh, on the outcomes. On the question of the former Secretary General of the EFFSC, the, you will remember when we released a statement, uh, the former SG of the EFFSC was suspended by the EFF and in fact his case was handled by the National Disciplinary Committee of the EFF. Uh, you will remember in our fourth NSA, one of the most important uh, amendments we made is that for you to be a member of the EFF Students' Command, number one, you must be registered to vote with the Independent Electoral Commission, but number two, you have to be a member of the EFF. So one cannot be a member of the EFF, EFFSC without being a member of the EFF. So when the EFF finds uh, you guilty, anyone for that matter, when the EFF finds you guilty, it becomes automatic, even at the level of the EFFSC. So the organization has uh, released and expelled him, um, and he knows he got the letters and the processes that if he so wishes to follow, he may be able to follow. And then on the NSFAS, there's a huge problem at NSFAS, and I think that's why in our statements we reference the SIU report, because SIU does a full 360 investigation on NSFAS and discovers many problematic elements about it. The, the point of BOCA students being uh, funded by NSFAS, the point of you'll find a situation where one student can be registered in 
multiple institutions across the country. And that student is getting, there's a bank account that is getting money. So the problem of stealing in NSFAS is deeply rooted. And it was even there before this uh, uh, guy who has just been fired now was removed. It was there, and it was the EFF that has always been championing raising these matters. Of course, we agree that uh, with you that one person couldn't have facilitated, say, 47 billion rand scheme. That's why in our statement we emphasize. But more importantly, we want to see more people criminally charged. Because the problem with the ANC government, by the way, and this is how it operates in a variety of municipalities across the country, when it removes someone from a, a place, instead of firing them, it's a redeployment. They don't really fire. They are not firing you. If you become problematic in this department, they remove you here, they put you in another department. It's the same which happens in ministries. They deploy someone to be a minister, this person messes up in this ministry, they say they fired them, South Africans celebrate, then they put them elsewhere. But it's a syndicate inside NSFAS, and it was there long before, and the SIU has pointed to this matter. What we want to see is that criminal cases must be opened. We are leading the way as the EFF Students Command. All of us here as the EFF SC officials were going to go and open a criminal case, and we encourage everyone at NSFAS. We don't want these media leaks. Because News 24 is not a police station. Uh, Sunday World is not a police station. IOL is not a police station. We don't want media leaks. There are people who, uh, random numbers, just sending leaks, this and that. No, there are other people involved. There's this. Go and open a case. It's a criminal case. Everyone must go and open a case so that the police can investigate, the hawks can investigate, and all NPA authorities, national prosecuting authorities can investigate and people must be charged. So this NSFAS scandal must not be treated like some civil matter of integrity and all of this. People must be arrested. 47 billion is not a small amount. 47 billion is a big amount. And what makes it even more painful is that we interact with students on the ground on a daily basis. And we know how difficult it is for many students who do not receive their allowances. We know how difficult it is for people to go months without receiving their allowances. So how do you steal in such an environment? How, your conscience, how do you lead yourself to steal in such an environment? So the rot in NSFAS must be dealt with, and there is no better time to deal with it than now. And I don't understand why the board is saying the contracts are going to be terminated in the future. What is the future? It's like when you're in a relationship and then each other argument is it, no, we don't. They must be terminated now. That must be the call that all students of Africa are making. These people were appointed irregularly. These people didn't follow the public procurement act, the public procurement processes. They must be removed now. And if there is any other process, it must take place in a transparent manner. National Treasury must look at it. The whole of South Africa must see it. But they must go. I don't know why the board is saying these people are going to be removed in the future. But the future can be 2026. The future can be 2030. Come and account. Not in a commission of inquiry. Not in some bogus DC of NSFAS, they must account to the court. They must account to the NPA. Criminal charges must be opened against all those who are involved. And then on the deployment process, look, well, the organization has a deployment policy, uh, and the organization primarily functions. The, DC, the branches themselves must be the primary stakeholders. Uh, in terms of deciding who must be deployed in various SRCs across the country. That's why you sit your bridge A's and people come democratically and make recommendations. And then the national must merely come. Uh, in most cases, by the way, I mean, we've had, like I said, about 21 SRC elections, we've won 16. Um, and, and, and when we compare the number of cases we've had, which we have had, uh, we've won 16. 19. No, the other ones were sharing. 
So outright it's 16, and then three uh, was sharing. So you can, you can say 19, but the, 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 the total control is 16, and then we're sharing UJ, we're sharing CUT, and then we're sharing, uh, I forgot the other one. So, and Sasko has one or two. So, in, in all the elections we've been having, really, in the main, we haven't had uh, much issues at a level of constituting. But, of course, we've had those uh, branches here and there who've had their challenges, as any other political space and environment would have. But, primarily, the branches are the ones that make the recommendations. They send, it's a recommendation, they send the national structure. And where there is a need, you know, structure will look at things like gender balance, they'll look at things like uh, other, they'll consider other political factors like uh, is the DC against this person, their experience in student governance, but in the main majority of the list they go back to the branches the way that they have come. So although there have been challenges, but I'm quite happy uh, in terms of how we've handled majority of the constituting meetings uh, uh, in South Africa. Like I said, we've got 16 institutions and we've only had cases in less than five or, or four. I think, uh, I wish, I, I, I think I've captured the majority of the questions. Uh, thank you very much, President. I'll now take the second and final round of hands. Um, One, two. Uh, you may start. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Shannon Merricks from Kasi Broadcasting Africa. I do apologize. It's one of those days. Uh, some of us, we don't come from universities. We don't have degrees. We are not too good in math. So are you saying the results for EFF student command is 16? For SASCO, it's two, and there's three you are sharing. Uh, I just want to confirm those numbers. And then on the, uh, this, the, the banks, it involves students paying extra 12 rent, 30 rent on fees. It involves transport, it re involves so many things. So let's say they say, let's continue the corruption because that's what they're actually saying. Let the corruption continue, let's fire the CEO. But what can you do as the student command immediately? I know it's exam period, so technically, hey, to close the universities, but what can you do to stop this whole corruption immediately? Because you can't say, you've stolen my car, you can drive it for another week. You take the car back, the police must impound it, and I think this whole 47 billion thing needs to be stopped immediately. What is the student going? command going to do immediately? Uh, greetings, uh, it's Kopano from Politics with Adams. I just have two questions for you, President. Uh, what is the student command's position in relation to the deaths of the young children from the foreign national shops? And then uh, the second question is, I think the student command's mandate is to clear student debts from higher learning institutions. I want to maybe have some clarity on how is the progress going with regards to that. Uh, thank you very much. There's also another question from Youth Dubs Radio that as we're heading towards the Saoos Conference, what is the position of the organization pertaining to deployment into the CNOM? Thank you. Over to you, President. No, thank you very much. The on the, the issue of the expired food, so, and I think the, the Commander-in-Chief clarified this uh, in one of the interviews that he's had. Um, you see, a problem uh, and a trap we must not fall to is to try and make the issue of expired food an issue of spaza shops. Spa, my man, shop right. Our people have been eating expired food, or rather buying expired food for many, 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 many years. 
from those two shops. I'm, I'm singling them out because I myself have had individual experiences. But I'm not writing out the other ones, your Woolworths, your Pick and Pays and all of them. But white companies have been feeding our people expired food. We don't condone, of course, the issue of expired food in these puzzle shops. And uh, we send our condolences to the, to the children who passed away as a result. But the narrative that is being pushed, and that is what we must be careful, is that expired food is only being sold in spaza shops. And if we're not careful, we're going to have a situation where spaza shops are being discontinued. Our people lose businesses. Our people lose employment opportunities in the townships and the rurals. And then these big corporations will then want to enter that space because the, the, the spaza shop economy is a very big economy. Because the biggest consumers in South Africa are black people. And the biggest consumers are black poor people in South Africa. So our people are benefiting from those businesses. So when we push a narrative that it is spaza shops that is selling expired food, it's extremely dangerous. Spa sells expired food. Shop rights sells expired food. What we should be saying is, what are the checks and balances? Is the Ministry of Health doing enough to go and regulate, to go to all shops in South Africa, including restaurants, by the way, to enter all shops that sell food to ensure that our people are eating food of proper quality, are eating food that is not expired. So it, it's an indictment on the Ministry of Health because it's their responsibility as an oversight body to ensure that our people are not eating expired food in all these businesses that are selling food to our people. So we must not sensationalize it and make it a problem of spaza shop. It's a problem of expired food, and it must be dealt with uh, uh, as such. On historical debt, the, you would know that the EFF and the EFF Student Command will be assisting the organization in that front. Is currently drafting a private member's bill, uh, which will be tabled in Parliament to clear all historical debt. So that's the position of the EFF. And we want to see how the ANC is going to respond to that. And we want, and we're doing this precisely because we know there are sellouts. They are going to vote no and use their majority to vote against it. But we want to demonstrate and expose them to the students and youth of South Africa who are currently sitting at home and can't pursue further studies because they owe the universities, who are currently sitting at home because they can't receive there are certificates because they owe universities, who can't graduate because they owe universities, who can't register at the beginning of the year because they owe universities. So we are going to table that bill in Parliament, and we want to see who is going to side with students and who is going to be against students. So those are the, our immediate steps uh, on the question of uh, 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 student debt. And then, of course, on South, we want the South Sea Conference to take place this year. Because it is our view that when we begin next year, we must have a fresh and new leadership that is aligned with the will of the students on the ground. You can't have a South NEC with 21 SASCO members, full, 100% SASCO. But the people who are leading university in South Africa is the EFF Students Command. It's just nonsensical. Like, even the minister himself, when he's sitting, wherever he's sitting, he ought to intervene in this situation. It's a crisis. Because Sausi does not, Sausi is supposed to speak on behalf of SRCs. Sausi is supposed to speak on behalf of students, to the minister, to, to, to other bodies, to the department, to even to NSFAS. So how do you have a Sausi that has 100% SASCO, yet the EFFSC is in charge of more than 80% of the institutions in South Africa? There is no legitimacy in that structure. And if the department cares, to protect and maintain that structure, then it must intervene. Otherwise, it must fall away. So in terms of deployment, we have our own processes which we are going to kickstart organizationally, which will include a, a thorough consultation with all the SRCs. Of course, it's primarily also going to be determined by the guidelines which are going to be set up in terms of who becomes a delegate, who doesn't become all of that. But the organization has its own process in terms of how it will deal with it. But the principle must be the conference must sit this year and the South NEC, the leadership of South, must reflect the representation of student organizations in South Africa, must, must reflect the will and aims of ordinary students on the ground. 
Our immediate step, of course, is that, uh, and you are correct, it's a difficult season because we're in exams. But the first step was... Worded how, how the statement is worded. We're not, we're not, we are opening a criminal case against NSFAS because we're not involved in the fights inside there. We don't, we don't know who is who there. We don't care. What we know is that 47 billion is being misused, and that's a criminal act to us. We're not interested in it's the CEO, it's the that, it's the CFO, it's the this. We are opening a case against NSFAS. And it will be the police, it will be the NPA, it will be the SIU, it will be the Hawks who are going to come back and say, this guy was involved, this guy was involved, this guy was involved, this guy was involved, and all of them must be imprisoned. All of them must be arrested. There must be no one who is favored against the other. If you stole money of students, if you stole money of the government, you must be arrested. It's as simple as that. So that is the most urgent step that we are taking as the EFFSC. But we also send a warning to the Department of Higher Education to say, we are not hearing this thing of termination of contracts in the future. And if the academic year of next year is to start smooth, is to start in the most stable way, our advice to them, our very friendly advice to them, is that Izaga, Tenet, Coinvest, what is the other one? TG? You don't the, uh, I don't know. The four that are currently, they must go now. They must be removed now. All of them. Why? Because you have adopted a report that says these people were awarded contracts irregularly. They've ex actually, NSFAS, the police should just walk into NSFAS offices and arrest everyone. They, they, they've ratted out on this, in a way. They, they, they've exposed themselves. The report says companies were adopted irregularly. People had a conflict of interest. Compa the, the, the procurement processes at NSFAS were not followed. The report, Tem uh, uh, Advocate Mwachobi and Vekman's law firm, presents that. What does NSFAS do? It adopts the report. Are they not handing themselves over to the police? Why are the police not walking into NSFAS? You have adopted a report that says you took companies without following the proper processes. We must just enter there and start arresting one by one from the security guard at the door to the cleaner on top. All of them, they must go explain themselves at the gate. All of them should be arrested. They have accepted. They have accepted it. They are not taking the report for review. If they were taking the report for review, that's a different story. They are not taking the report for review. They are saying, we agree with the report that NSFAS is using companies to disperse allowances to students where it appointed them not following the correct processes. Even worse, officials of NSFAS have a conflict of interest. They've put their friends, they're eating. So it should be an easy case, and that's the case we're going to make, and that's why we're going to be opening a case against the institution of NSFAS. Because it is our view that there is a lot more dirty laundry inside that NSFAS. Remember, we're going to 2024 national and provincial government elections. The modus operandi of the ANC before elections, if you didn't know, it steals, Baba. Even this cash in transit, I, 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 I don't trust these cash in transits which are taking place. People saying, no, they, they are too. These criminals, they always become many before an election. There's always many criminals before an election is stealing. Why? They are fundraising for 2024. So we can never allow NSFAS to be used as a fundraising platform for the ANC to go to 2024 elections. All those who are involved, they must be arrested. And we are going to champion that struggle until we see people in orange overalls and we're not going to stop. And all those dodgy companies must go. And if there is a new process, it must be open and transparent. Thank you. Uh, there seems to be another hand, uh, President. Let's just attain it. Thank you, man. I, I, I think this, you know, 47 billion is not a 47 rent. It's not a, some small money at the Spaza shop. 
So I'm just asking if we can just one minute zoom in more into this because uh, we are aware that Ernest Koza, the, the chairman of, of the board, has been implicated into corruption in Mpumalanga. The CEO that they fired now is also been, like, like the president is saying, and it's raising more questions, uh, uh, this cadre deployment, the CEO was already, before he came to uh, NESPES, he was already implicated as well. So you have a chairperson, you have a CEO already implicated, and the funny thing, the SIU is not saying like they did with the SABC and all others. These are the delinquent boards, the directors dissolved the whole board, dissolved the whole structure. Yeah, it's, it's a nightmare. And I, 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 I just want the president, you know, 47 billion can do a lot for, for students. It can do a lot for black people. It can do a lot, not just uh, spaza shop things. So, you know, I think one of the things, the whole board uh, needs to step down if uh, this thing is serious. And the fundraising, yes, it looks like a fundraising uh, campaign. But my last point is thank you for the opportunity. We are going to 2024 national elections. The majority of people that are not registered are youth, uh, whether it's youth in university, whether it's youth in high school, whether it's youth that left school, that's unemployed, and so on. What is the student command going to do to get these young people from the streets? Nyaupe, you know, the uh, president of EFF has raised the issue about the drugs that just comes back into circulation every time. And you know, I'm, I'm from the township. Uh, I know these things. The guys selling drugs are matriculants. They are not uh, like before people that are uneducated and so on. So how are you going to get these matriculants to vote and try and create something and use their skills and not sell drugs? Thank you. Uh, greetings to the leadership, uh, President C. Uh, Lonzi. I am Hopewell Adams from Politics with Adams. Uh, my question was a bit covered this side, but I would like to say that um, what are some of the measures that are taken by the, S, the EFFSC regarding the unemployment rate uh, that we are currently facing in South Africa? And then uh, secondly, I would like to uh, ask one question regarding on uh, what are the measures also taken by the EFFSC to address the prices of student accommodations which are uh, a bit high? Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's Loretto from Inside Politics. I just want to ask, um, what is the student command doing for students that are, are funded by NSS but not receiving allowances without, within all these um, universities? And also, I, I just want um, a verification, what is the student We need uh, their contracts. Thank you. I think that's fair. I will leave it. Okay. So the and you are raising a good point because the NSFAS this year, uh, in fact, not only this year but also in previous years, there are, there are many students who uh, quite uh, correctly qualify uh, in terms of the academics, also, but in terms of the needs because they may not have the necessary money and the parents are not there. But they are currently not being funded by NSFAS. And that is precisely what makes us to be so angry, to say that even in an environment, because that man, that budget of NSFAS, by the way, is not enough. Because what we should be calling for in South Africa is free education. Because NSFAS is not sustainable. It can't, it can't fund all of those students. It's not enough. That money is a little compared to the number of students who need to be funded and assisted by NSFAS. But even when the money is not enough, even when the money is a little and we're trying to spread it across all communities, all villages, all townships, even when the money is enough, the ANC government is stealing it. Even when there are students who are sitting at home without funding, there are students, as we sit, they qualify academically, they are proper, the, 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 the financials of, of their parents, they are below.
of the budget of NSFAS. But even when the budget is not enough, the ANC is stealing. So that's what frustrates us the most, to say, how do you steal in such an environment? Because we should be trying to collect as much resource as possible to ensure that there is no one who is left outside of education because of their economic background. But they are stealing. So our, our intentions and our actions to root out, because we, we are of the view that there is an institutionalized rot. There is institutionalized looting there, such that even if you can remove the whole board, remove the CEO, remove everyone, and put completely new faces, because it's institutionalized, it's part of the everyday operations of NSFAS, we are not going to get rid of these problems. So we must see action being taken, and action must, can only be taken when people are getting arrested, when the NPA gets involved. So those are some of the things that we're going to be doing. But we're also going to be demonstrating. Of course, we've said it's exams. We want students to focus on exams, uh, write their exams, pass. And then when we see that there is arrogance, there is reluctance to act, uh, we're going to be able to make a national and clear on call to all students. And, and I think it touches on, on the question you raised that uh, uh, 47 billion rand is not, is not a small amount. Uh, and really, this, this is not just a problem for, for students. I hope the parents as well, they are, they, are, they, are, they are listening or they are watching what is currently taking place. Because it is also the parents who don't sleep at night because they are worried that their kids are not funded. They are worried that their kids are not going to school. So the whole of society should actually take up this struggle as their struggle. It's not a struggle of students, because these students, they, they, they must account somewhere. They, they, when, they, they, when they get depressed because there have been no allowances, when they get depressed because they can't pass, because the learning, the learning environment is not conducive to learning, they get depressed and we go home, we become a problem at home. So even the parents, because there is this thing in South Africa, whenever students are engaged in the struggle, it's like, oh, it's just uh, it's students, they're protesting, uh, or oh, students are having problems. A problem of students is a problem of all of us in South Africa. Because if we do not complete there, we're going home and we're going to be a problem. And we're going to finish all the food in the fridge because there's nothing else left for us to do. So... This is not a problem of students. It's a problem of the whole of South Africa. And it's important that South Africa must take note of this. Because as we go to the polls next year, as we go to vote next year, we ought to be able to remove this government of the ANC. Because it has lost any, con any sense of conscience. It has lost any sense of guilt. They still openly, they don't care. There is a municipality in the Northwest I forgot the name of it, where they bought two laptops for two million. So you can see that the, the, the level of stealing is no, uh, they don't care anymore. It's like they're saying, yeah, there's nothing that South Africans are going to do. Even if we can steal, even if we can do, we, South Africans are, going, are still going to vote for us. They've got that arrogance. So next year we have an opportunity to show them that we too can be arrogant and we can remove them from power. And I think lastly it goes to your question to say, what should we then do? Because majority of the people who are ineligible to vote, they are youth. As the number we gave, I think, was 5.9 million. 5.9 million young people between the ages 17 to 34, who next year they'll be eligible to vote. In other words, they'll be, with, they'll be above 18 and within the voting age. But as things stand, they are not registered to vote. And you're correct. Because the student population accounts for an odd 1.8 million. So majority of them are in the communities. Majority of them are drowning in drug and alcohol abuse. Majority of them are drowning in teenage pregnancy. Majority of them are not in education, employment, or training, what we call the NEET youth. So the EFF has made that assessment. And the solution to that is that it has formed a youth and student elections mobilization committee. And the sole mandate of that mobilization committee is to say, whilst we consolidate our ground, because the university and TVET space is our ground, we must consolidate our ground. We must ensure that all these students who are voting for the EFFSC, 
They are registered to vote and they must vote for EFF. But once we consolidate our ground, we must also enter uncharted territory. And what is the uncharted territory? We must go to the communities. We must go and speak to the unemployed youth. We must go and speak to the young uh, 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 sporting teams that are not being looked after by the government. We must go to the churches. There are youth structures in the churches as well. So from now until next year, May, we are going to be engaged in that program permanently because we appreciate that universities are not an island and universities exist within a much greater community. So with those words, uh, I think the youth of South Africa are the only people who can save us from this mess because we constitute a majority when it comes to voting. It is only us who can remove the ANC from power. It is only us who cannot be blackmailed that Nelson Mandela fought for us. We don't know him. We have never seen him. We don't even know if he exists or we're just being told stories here. Yeah. So it is only the youth of South Africa that can liberate South Africa. But the youth must stop saying, I am not, I'm, not, I'm not involved in politics. Because if you don't involve yourself in politics, politics is going to involve itself in you. And already we see politics involving itself because you are not getting allowances in the institutions. We must ensure that all 5.9 million, all of them, all 5.9 million youth must register to vote. We must make it fashionable to register to vote. And next year we must take a stand and deliver economic freedom in South Africa. If they fought for a political concession in 1994, it is our time to fight for economic freedom in South Africa. Thank you very much. I think uh, we're done. Uh, thank you very much, President. That concludes our media briefing. And a thank you to members of the media for coming. Uh, it's urgent. Thank you. Yeah.